So Prague City University, who, who we are. As I said, this part will be quite brief uh, so we can go into more detail about the programmes and what to expect from your education as a master's level student. So the first thing I really like to introduce and say about our university is that we have a practical hands-on approach to learning. So you're going to hear about this as we talk about the programs, but we're really focused on how learning can be applied to the real world. Some of our graduates do go on to have successful careers in academia and take this route, but many of our graduates choose our university and choose to study with us because of the prospects upon graduation in terms of global careers. We have a very diverse student body, both in terms of nationalities. So we have students from over 80 different citizenships, meaning that you get perspectives from many different students, but also in terms of um, age range and background, both educationally and culturally. So one of the things we want to highlight today during this event is the nature of the type of student who is studying on one of our master's programs. We do have people who graduate directly from their bachelors who decide to enroll in a master's programs, but certainly we also have students who have graduated for, um, been graduated for many years and have decided to return to education. So it's quite a mix and we believe that actually uh, strengthens and enriches your learning experience. And we will tell you a bit more concretely about how that works uh, in both the programs Alexa and I are studying uh, as we go through, but also the environment itself is very international. So um, our programs are taught in English, and in fact, all our master's degrees are British degrees. So what that means is if you enroll into one of our master's programs, your final award and diploma will come from Teesside University. So you can see one of our previous graduates in the image there. Uh, and she's holding her diploma from Teesside University. So it's an internationally recognized qualification you would be gaining. We have three schools, um, sorry, we have four schools um, and we've just introduced our fourth school, the School of Education, in addition to our School of Business, School of Media and IT and School of Art and Design. Um, and in our School of Education, we are now offering Czech degrees. But as mentioned, for the master's programs we're going to be focused on this evening, those programs are British, meaning that everything is taught in English and English is the common language of the university. Um, but the people that you will be studying with, the people that you will be taught by, they have this range and diverse um, backgrounds, as I mentioned. We keep our class sizes very small, so you'll hear a little bit more about how the sessions are run uh, imminently. But what that means is that you get to know your fellow classmates, you get to know your lecturers, um, but there is still that inspiration and innovation through the teaching. Um, it gives us, I think, more freedom to be adaptable, to respond to what the current issues are in industry, and then share those with you through the curriculum. It allows us to be more flexible, more current, um, and ultimately that's what gives you the advantage in the job market. Um, as mentioned, there's also uh, dedicated academic research. So there's opportunities for research collaboration. Um, and when we're talking about our projects, we can also tell you a little bit more about how the research um, is happening across the university as well. So that's a brief overview to who we are. Um, hopefully, because you're already here today, you know a little bit about us as a university. Uh, as I mentioned, we have four schools and um, we're mainly going to be focusing on those which offer the master's programs this evening. So I'd like to start off with our School of Business. Um, I noticed that someone else has joined us on the call. So if you're interested in a different school, please let us know. But otherwise, we'll focus um, around this for some time now. So if you do have questions, let us know as we go through. So by way of introduction, at the master's level, we offer two programs here. The first is in international management, which is what Alexa is currently studying. And the second is in leadership and strategic management, which is what I am currently studying. You can see there that there's different options in terms of how you study. So for the international management program, you can choose between two formats. The first is what we call intensive. So that takes less time to complete and is in three semesters. 
or you can study standard format, which as you can see there, takes more like two years to complete. That includes four semesters of taught classes, plus a fifth semester, which is your dissertation. So um, that's why that program, if you study it in the standard format, takes slightly longer to complete. You can see there that the Leadership and Strategic Management program uh, is only available in intensive format. And that master's is essentially a fast track master's. It's, it's been designed as an industry integrated degree program. So it's really important for students coming into that program to already have some work experience. And um, shortly I'll be explaining to you how that actually is working out in practice, the nature of the students on the program, the sorts of assignments we're doing and how that's actually being applied and related to the workplace. In terms of these programs, not only is there um, for international management, the time length which you can choose. Um, typically, if you will be um, an international student applying for a visa and you want to come to Prague for your studies, we would recommend you to study the intensive format so that you can be full time dedicated to your studies. If you're already based here or you're going to be studying through our um, global blended learning format, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second, we might recommend our standard format, which means that you can work alongside your studies. And if you have competing priorities, it gives you more time uh, to complete assignments and to make sure that you can manage your time effectively. So what does global blended learning mean? What global blended learning means is that the majority of your lectures are delivered through online platforms. So at the moment, the Masters in Leadership and Strategic Management is delivered only in this format. So we have students on that program who are not only based in Prague, but are based around the world. Um, we participate in live lectures. They are also recorded. They typically take place, um, well, they always take place in the evening in uh, Central European time. And there are also some weekend sessions as well, meaning that it should be accessible to professionals regardless of location. For the international management program, you can choose to study it in person here in Prague, where your classes will be delivered uh, in the classroom. Or we do also offer this program through the global blended learning format as well, meaning that again, your classes would be delivered through the online learning format. Um, that doesn't mean to say that you're just expected to suddenly do everything uh, by yourself. You have access to all the same resources. The lectures are live. Um, it's representative actually of a classroom experience. There is dialogue and discussion, um, which we'll go into uh, shortly. And actually at this point, I would like to bring in Alexa, who signed up originally for the um, in-person format of the program. Obviously, due to the pandemic, things have changed. So she's going to tell you a little bit more about how her experience has been joining the program and the ways in which she's been taught. So Alexa, maybe I can just hand over to you for a second and I'll also stop the screen share uh, in case there are any questions or people want to uh, contribute as we're speaking. Yeah, sure. So uh, like Natasha said, I originally joined um, this program at the height of the pandemic. So um, I started in September, 2020. Um, so my plan was to study online, but I couldn't. So all of our classes were taught through the global blended format. Now, during this time, uh, even though I had hoped to study in person, I didn't feel like I missed out on any part of the studies because I still had constant contact with my lecturers. The, um, the classes were interactive and we were able to ask questions and have group discussions and the use of breakout rooms during the, the lectures as well. Um, and the great part is that some of my, my classmates weren't in Prague either. So it, it kind of gave an opportunity to look at this international management program, but actually have an international student base currently all over the world. Um, so it was really nice to bring in that, that element that might not have happened otherwise. So now that things have kind of opened up a bit in Prague, um, I'm now 
sort of in a hybrid format. So one of my classes is in person, which I'll have in about 45 minutes. <laughs> and the other one is online um, with weekend classes as well. So because this program has both formats available, our weekend classes are actually both of the formats together in one class. So even though we, we are separate cohorts, we also do some group projects and collaborate and, and do have communication. So I do know all of my, my classmates, even the ones who aren't in Prague and you know we work on projects together. Um, yeah, and during this studying online, I never felt like I, I was missing out on studies or um, I still got this full university experience and um, yeah, it was great. Thanks, Alexa. And I think just something to um, mention, it's actually the, the final slide as we will mm -hmm. go through. Um, but just to say that for the upcoming semesters, um, if, if you would like to put in the chat which semester you're interested in joining us from, it would also be uh, helpful for us if you haven't shared that information previously. Um, but we are for the upcoming academic year, counting on having those two um, cohorts. So having an in-person cohort, but depending on who uh, decides to join the program, um, we may also have a global blended cohort. It's obviously the circumstances which have meant um, that we have this hybrid uh, situation because some students signed up for in-person, but then uh, due to the mitigating circumstances have not yet been able to come here in Prague. So Certainly for September 2022, if you have signed up to be here in person, and if you're an international student who will be seeking a, a visa, um, we would expect you to have that visa application done in time to start your studies with the remaining uh, students in Prague. It's only that we're in this period at the moment where people are still um, traveling, hence why we have this sort of hybrid scenario. But we do anticipate from February and September that whichever format you sign up to study, Certainly September 2022, we would anticipate that's the format that you have in February, there may still be a degree of flexibility um, just based upon the situation. So we'd like to go a little bit more into detail now about who our student body is um, what you really get from being a master's student at Prague City University and what are some of the key features of the two programs to help you decide potentially which program is most suitable for you, but also to understand maybe why our program is different to studying at another university. So you can see here the other programs we do offer in the School of Business. Um, I would just like to mention that we offer our bachelor's degrees in a global blended learning format as well. And these are particularly popular with professionals who perhaps started out in their working career without a university level education. And then they're deciding to come back to education. And in fact, two of our blended learning graduates have continued on to the master's in leadership and strategic management. So when at the start, I mentioned about our diverse student body, um, that's partly what I meant. We don't just have professionals on our master's programs. We actually have a range or different types of students studying across all of our programs. And you can see there that we also offer um, ACCA and SEMA professional qualifications, um, which are also there as further development opportunities for students who perhaps want to qualify as professional accountants. Uh, we offer bespoke uh, programs to companies and so on and so forth. So. In addition to that traditional, um, you know, 18 to 21 year old uh, undergraduate degree seeking students, we also have a number of um, professional or perhaps mature students in addition to those bachelor's degree students who come on to a master's. So um, thinking through now into more detail about what stands out about the program. So um, here probably Alexa and I will both um, contribute into what it means for each of our programs. Um, so speaking now more specifically about the Masters in Leadership and Strategic Management, this program is really targeted at people who already have work experience. It is one of the entry requirements that you have at least two years work experience. Most of the people on the program, I would say, are more in the um, 
kind of 10 year work experience bracket, to be honest with you. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that if you are starting out in your career and um, it's not a good idea to join this program, it's really designed to be suitable for those who want to go through to the executive level or are performing at that level and feel like they wish to kind of solidify um, like their, their knowledge in terms of like the theory and how that's applied. And what I found personally is that it's a really great opportunity to actually reflect on your personal working practices, but also your organization's working practices. So a key element of this program is that it's connected to your workplace. That's why one of the entry requirements is to be in employment, because you can see on the screen there that we mentioned flexibility of projects and assignment topics. Now, um, I don't want to seal everything Alexa is going to say. So um, in, in my cohort specific case, um, what that means is we're all studying, uh, sorry, we're all working in very different sectors um, and in quite different environments. So um, we have a student who works more within like supply chain. Uh, we have a student who's in IT, student who works for a large insurance company, someone who works for a human resources company, myself in a higher education institute. Um, so the types of companies and organizations we work for, um, their goals are quite different, but of course, within any organization, there's shared similarities. But in terms of our projects and our assignments, they're connected to our individual workplace. So we are asked, what global challenges are we facing in our workplaces? So this semester, we are looking at theories um, such as digital disruption. Uh, we're looking at ethics and government governance. We're looking at culture um, and gender within the workplace. But then once we learn the theory, the project that's set and the assignment that's set will be specifically related to a global challenge within our industry. Um, so to give you an example of the digital disruption, um, we were looking at how Uber, for example, uh, influenced the transport industry and uh, technology. Uh, in my case, you know, I'm going to be investigating how COVID-19 has impacted sort of student mobility uh, and the recruitment challenges around that. It also brings in things such as geopolitical factors as well. So the projects are particularly focused around work. And indeed, one of the modules that you study is called work-based portfolio. And this whole module is essentially learning different leadership theories, but then taking away observational questions and then looking at the situations that you come into in your workplace. And effectively, you are then reflecting on them and seeing how are those leadership theories at play? How could you implement them further? How could they help improve your organization? And when you're looking at these assignments and looking at these projects, the goal really within this is not only for you to develop yourself, but there should be some benefit also to the organization. Um, it should help you kind of be able to take ideas back into your workplace, perhaps speak with colleagues about different issues, um, think about how things could be better structured. Because as I mentioned, it's really about um, people who want to go up to that if they're not already at the management level into the executive level and it's about strategy uh, risk management and so on so it's really really very very practical and what I personally enjoy about that is yes you do learn theory but actually some of the most interesting part of our lessons are the group discussions so you get to hear directly from the people in the different organizations how they do it what's worked um, real life examples and think about how you can implement that into your day-to-day -day, uh, operations or strategy, strategic thinking as well. So uh, that's just sort of one uh, example of the flexibility of, of projects in that way. Um, I want to bring in Alexa here because um, for the business programs in particular, not only do we welcome students from different career paths, but we also welcome them from different educational backgrounds. So perhaps Alexa, you want to mention a little bit about that here. Yeah, sure. So the um, the master's in international management program is really great for that. So we have students from uh, basically any educational background that you can think of. So we've had students, well, in my program, um, 
people who've studied law or psychology or my background is in music, for example, um, people who have studied business. So there's a big mix of backgrounds, which I think brings an interesting dynamic into those group discussions because not everyone has this background in business. So we're looking at managing people and working with people and um, kind of from, it can be kind of from an abstract um, look. So kind of like what Natasha was saying with this flexibility of projects and assignment topics, we, we also have, have that. So because we all have different experience, this final dissertation or even these, some of our projects throughout the semester, they're pretty free in topic. Um, they do have to be related to management in some way, but the, the dissertation can really be whatever you, you like. Um, in the first semester, we had to propose our research for the final dissertation and propose this topic. And what we were told was pick something that you enjoy, pick something that you're really passionate about. And as long as it relates to management, it works. So, you know, you don't have to have this background. You don't have to have extensive experience. Um, we do have students who have recently graduated and, you know, they finished their bachelor's degree in June of 2020, for example, and then started in September. Uh, and we have students who have taken time off, have gained work experience, and then decided to go back. So it's, it's kind of a, a next step for anyone looking to take a next step. You don't have to have specific experience, although it can help and you can contribute interesting, um, interesting uh, perspectives into that conversation. Um, this flexibility of, of projects, um, we really try to implement projects that will, mm, that can be used in your professional life. So for example, my classes this semester, one is taking a hypothetical country from a hypothetical company from a developed country and opening it in a developing country. So looking at all of those cultural differences that could pose a challenge, um, different economical issues that might arise um, and researching that and putting together a proposal that will help this company succeed in opening in this new market. Um, one class in the first year was about developing yourself and doing some self-reflection, kind of like what Natasha was saying. Um, and seeing how you how you are as a person in in your organization and looking at different things that you can put into place in order to to better yourself as an employee and as a manager so uh, they're all really applied and topics that um, topics that mean something and that you actually know how to do that work when you finish your studies so it's not just learning information and taking an exam, but it's learning the information and then being able to use it in a practical scenario in the future. Thanks, Alexa. Yeah, and I, I can see, Lewis, you've just um, contributed there as well about the importance yeah. of experience. Um, and yeah, I think it's something that I guess one of the distingu distinguishing features of, between the two programs is that certainly for leadership and strategic management, we, we pull on our experience all the time. In fact, that's effectively how the program is, is taught. We're sort of, we almost go from the experience into the theory rather than going from the theory into the um, practical, which perhaps in the international management program is more the route that, that's taken just because there is that cross-section and diversity. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely fair to say that any graduate who goes on to international management, whether they've had the break like Alexa mentioned or they've recently continued, they want to deepen their understanding and they're looking to, you know, if they understand that having that master's will fast track their, their career progress as well um, and access deeper levels. And of course, we, we have it there on the screen as well. One of the key things is peer learning. Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to, um, in addition to from your lecturers who have a wealth of experience and are experts in the field, they've also worked in practice too. So but that peer learning from 
other students who have different work experience from you, like we said at the start, different educational and cultural backgrounds, um, it makes it a really dynamic and a really interesting um, program. So we have a couple of questions um, coming through. Um, so I'd just like to clarify that, yes, if your background is in a different field, um, like Alexa mentioned, her bachelor's degree was in music. Mm -hmm. um, she has still, because of her, her work experience and her overall application, been admitted onto the international management program. So you can definitely progress into the international management field regardless of your prior field of study. Um, and we also believe that regardless of the sector that you've worked in, actually, you will always be able to relate it to management. So it's a really good way of um, deepening your knowledge. The fact that you maybe haven't been in a business orientated role, um, it doesn't matter because you will mm -hmm. learn about that. You will hear how that can be applied. Um, mm -hmm. And effectively, you will kind of that that is what you will learn through the program ultimately, but also from those who do have the business experience. And if you've even going through your bachelor's degree, regardless of your field, you will have worked with other people. Some of the issues that come up through international management, um, you will have encountered them, even if not in a formal uh either educational or professional context. But definitely um I think in that case the international management program is more suitable for people who um yeah maybe don't kind of have that that level of work experience yet or they're starting out uh, or they don't kind of have that that clear direction i think for the leadership and strategic management like i mentioned it's really a fast track program that's highly linked to your workplace um and that environment and looking at practical issues that you face and how you overcome them and having that reflective uh, element upon you as a as a leader and somebody who will manage strategically as the title mm -hmm. suggests uh, mm -hmm. so that's what you're trying to go into um mm -hmm. and the applied learning is really important to us um as i mentioned we are our lecturers have the experience across that and also um it's coming up a little bit later in the presentation but in addition to just your lecturers, there's also guest lecturers as well. So you do get input from people outside of uh, Prague City University, outside of the students, to give you their real life experience as well. Um, the idea of gaining the theoretical backing is really so that you have that underpinning and then you can consider how it does work in practice or actually make the time to reflect upon that and how you can further incorporate it um, into your your working uh working life and I think we've covered quite a lot there I think around the group discussions and peer learning and flexibility of projects and assignment topics and um, just on that note uh, to clarify one of the great things in my personal opinion about the British system is that you study the same uh, modules as each other but because your research interests might be different and your projects might be different because of where you work or what your background is and what you want to focus on, like Alexa said, due to the backgrounds, um, you are able to do that. You can have this freedom around these projects. So what you'll find is that the people on the programme, you know, if they've come from law, if they've come from IT, if they've come from, yeah, an art and design or artistic creative background, um, they might choose to do their projects within these fields or they might focus on marketing or might focus on human resources it really depends what your I suppose interests are but also career ambitions and what you want to uh, deepen your knowledge around as well but I also just want to touch upon a couple of other things which perhaps make the programs that we offer quite different and the first thing that you see there is access to lecturers so you can see that we have um well, we've already talked about the fact of like who our lecturers are and the, the way in which the classes are run. But even outside of uh, class time, they will set up individual consultations with you. So because many people on the programme do have outside commitments, there are some students on international management who are studying um, 
exclusively full time and that's what they're dedicated to. But many of our students, as you heard, are working, maybe they have families, maybe they travel internationally with their job. Um, you know, we understand that studies is going to be one of your focus focuses, but there'll also be other priorities that you have to contend with. So access to lecturers, it's really key. So if you are given a deadline to submit a draft, submit a proposal, you can get feedback. Uh, it's very structured in how you should um, submit your assignments. There's lots of support there as well and guidance also in where to find resources. Because, of course, if you have lots of time uh, you know, to read lots of articles in your spare time and read around your topic, that's, that's fantastic. But the lecturers understand that, you know, you have an assignment to complete and they want to try and help you be, um, you know, effective in your research and effective in where you're searching for the relevant information. Of course, it is master's level. So you are expected to, to do reading, to have an extensive um, bibliography, to have made sure, made sure that you have found um, accurate sources for your work uh, that are evidence-based and appropriate for the level of study that you're undertaking um, but you are helped with direction on papers that might assist your specific topic um, authors key books to look to um, and we do in addition to a physical library of course as I mentioned many of our students aren't actually studying in Prague um, there's access to online learning facilities as well and journals so you have access to this wealth of resources um, to support your research so you're not just kind of left you know it, it can sound I think a bit daunting to think wow well I have all this flexibility around my project topic and how do you then start your assignment and um, your lecturers are there really to um, guide you provide feedback and assist you and direct you in these resources and I have to say if you've taken a break from education you might find the first semester a bit of a shock uh, getting back into it but once you are into that rhythm uh, I think it comes back quite quite naturally and hopefully as you're hearing from us, you know, if, if you find the content interesting and then there's a relevance to your work and professional life as well, it's quite easy actually to, to make the time to dedicate to it because you see immediately the advantage to what you're learning. So we also talked about the evening and weekend classes. We do appreciate that time zones may be an issue, um, but we do try and accommodate that where possible. Um, certainly, if something is delivered online, it's also recorded. Um, I mentioned access to lecturers. So if you do need to meet with them at a different time, they're available to do that. And I think we've covered some of the applied learning as well. So I'd just like to ask at this point, um, we sort of have around 20 minutes left of the time that we'd allocated today. Um, if there's sort of any specific questions that have come up, I know we've had another um, student join us uh, today who I believe is interested also in the Masters in Leadership and Strategic Management and one of the business programs but if you do have any questions that you would like us to um, answer now now could be a good time before we just move through to share with you a little bit more around what's available outside of your program so actually beyond just being a student in the program how do our master's level students who are both in person but also studying remotely uh, engage with the university. So that's the next section. So there, are there any questions that we can help with? No, not for now. I, I just wanted to add one, one more thing as well um, about the uh, projects that we work on in our program. So because I'm in on the in-person format uh, and we do have the global blended format, that doesn't mean that we don't um, work on projects together. So one of my classes, we have a group project and one of my group mates is actually in, in another country uh, about nine hours behind us. So um, we, you know, we have to plan and organize and, and meet and still work on things together. So just because you are in one format of the, the international management program doesn't mean that you won't still, you know, interact and work with and have projects with people from another format as well. Thanks, Alexa. Yeah, it's an important note. Um, 
we also just to add for for our program um it is mainly well so far it's been all individual uh, based projects and i actually believe that will uh, be the case so we don't have group projects in the leadership and strategic management it is more personal um to you and i just want to revert quickly to the timing of that to maybe help you with your decision making as well um, you can see there that we have the time that it takes to complete and these programs start both in February 2022 and also in September 2022 as well. So they start in both February and the September semester. Um, if you're going to be studying in the global blended learning format, we'll come up to admissions deadline shortly, but there is still time to apply. And even if you're an international visa seeking student, it's getting slightly late now for February, um, but if that's something you're still considering, then I would recommend speaking directly to your admissions advisor. But the reason you have the different time lengths there is just depending on when you start will depend on when you complete your dissertation. So I started in the February semester, um, which means semester one was February to June. I'm now in my second semester and my third semester will be the dissertation, which will start in February. So it will take me probably not quite 18 months, it will be more like 15 months. But if I had have started in September, it would be one year all the way through. But you do get a shorter break over the um, winter break in between semesters if you do start in the September. So it's quite intensive. Um, but as I said, the, the leadership and strategic management is really industry integrated and a fast track program uh, because so much of the content you study is related to the workplace. So it's that's how it's achievable. Uh, I would say, whereas international management, if you are working, we do recommend the standard format, which is what Alexa's studying now. Uh, she's obviously working full time alongside that too. Um, in exceptional cases, it might be possible to do intensive. It just means that each semester you would have more, more assignments. So I don't think we've had anyone join us who's interested in our School of Media and IT. The only thing I wanted to add on this is we do offer the Masters in Computing. It's offered in the same formats, um, intensive and standard, as we explained, and global blended learning is also available. In case you have work experience in IT, but it's not your educational background, we do offer a potential conversion route. So you can study um, a semester or potentially a full year in preparation to entry to the masters. So I just mentioned that in case anyone is uh, considering it, but as I don't believe we have any um, students who are particularly looking at this program today, then we're going to move on from that. Similarly, we offer two masters degrees in our School of Art and Design. Um, I had planned to talk in a little bit more detail about this, but as I don't believe we have any potential um, art and design master students here will will move on so i'd like to just spend a short period of time telling you a little bit more about um sorry just one second uh telling you a little bit more about our individual um events and speakers that happen outside of your studies so I mentioned before that there are guest lectures. You can actually see that this week uh, we have two guest speakers as part of our series that we run. So each school has a series attached to it. Master speaker series is business, media and innovation and technology is media and IT. Artisan lecture, lecture series is obviously school of art and design. And then excellence in learning and teaching series is a school of education. So should you be interested in hearing how this um, how these events happen and the types of professionals that we have in. I'm pleased to say we have a guest speaker from Teesside University Business School, our strategic partner, Suzanne Witherington, speaking tomorrow at six o'clock, so the same time as this evening, speaking about creating a sustainable organization. And then sustainability is the theme of the week. Um, as our visiting artisan lecture series, we'll also focus on that as well. And something that I think is really nice is we really try and encourage um, interdisciplinary projects. So as I mentioned, you could have um, on one of your business master's programs, students who completed a creative program, for example. So you might equally be interested in attending some of our exhibitions. You may be interested in attending the guest speakers of others and just hearing about some of these different inputs. So we try and make sure that the speakers are varied, uh, coming across different sectors. And the aim is to really, again, confront practical real world issues that are happening within the workplace. So you can hear how others are um, 
applying their work experience to those. And then also we try and have some which concentrate perhaps more on research areas, but that again could be applied in the workplace. I do want to mention here um, that if you are a student who's coming from uh, abroad or you're coming for full time studies, that of course we do have student societies and student council events. These aren't just open to our undergraduate level students, they are open to our master's students as well. And I'm actually pleased to say that it is some of our master's students who have been um, really actively engaged actually in um, marketing the university in taking part in um, the social events that we've done. Uh, we have quite a lot of performers and singers, for example, and they come from across all of our programs. Uh, so if you have, external interests as well. Some of these societies are more, um, let's say hobby and interest based. For example, there's a yoga society, which is of course open to everybody, um, but some of them are perhaps a bit more academic or uh, let's say finance focused. I think we had a society that was focused around Bitcoin. I'm not gonna lie, it's not my area of expertise, um, but we do have quite a breadth of societies. So don't feel that these things are not accessible to you as a master's level student. I think really what we wanted to get across today is that yes, your experience is at that higher, uh, more professional level, but the activities that have take place across the university are equally accessible to you. And we try and encourage uh, input throughout them as well and your engagement with them too. So on that same note, um, each year we have an annual theme. This year it's called Be the Change. And this is really encouraging um, the entire student body to come together to think about the key issues that are affecting us um, as a society. So things such as climate change, um, different uh, topics of race and integration within society, um, thinking about the pandemic and how can we take ownership of what's happening in society and come together as a group to what we've called here, be the change. So, Regardless of the level that you're studying at, there are these interdisciplinary events, um, interdisciplinary projects as well, where you can learn from others throughout the university, not just within your programme. And then we've also um, recently introduced some further study opportunities and connection opportunities. So what I'd like to mention is LinkedIn Learning. So in addition to your study programme, your the guest lectures that you have access to, you also have access to the LinkedIn Learning platform. So if you are studying uh, within management, as everybody today has expressed an interest in, but you'll perhaps want to know to learn to program or you're in the IT field or you want to learn more about uh, law or you want to do a bit more about finance, whatever it might be that you're interested in, the LinkedIn learning platforms available to do that. Or maybe you pick up on some content that's been really interesting within your uh, module, within your uh, teaching session, and you can go to LinkedIn Learning and you can um, develop that further and undertake further training and courses or think about how that could be incorporated uh, again through, into your workplace and training. So this is something that's available to our students as well. There's also kind of other diverse programs. So one is Park City Architecture. So even if you're not here, but you have an interest in the city, we want you to be able to engage with Prague, take advantage of that. Um, Prague has also got really great professional networks as well. Um, so you can see there that we promote regular career opportunities. And also we have an annual career fair. And that's both for students who are perhaps starting out in their career, but also another opportunity to hear from specific industries and specific fields um, about what they do and the types of skills that they're looking for and really what's at the cutting edge. And if you are on the leadership and strategic management program, maybe that's something you also want to engage with from a point of view of um, you know, your employees or thinking about hiring graduates. You know, we're kind of open to these things being a two-way um, two collaboration. Of course, we have our alumni association. You become an alumni of not only Park City University, but also Teesside University. And then I just touched upon our industry network. Um, as well. So there's quite a lot of external opportunities. Um, I just touched upon Prague as a city. There are a lot of international businesses here. So some of our students do choose to stay in their uh, home countries uh, to study on the Global Blended program. Some come to Prague to study and then find either internship or full-time work positions as well and choose to stay. Um, 
as I mentioned, it is particularly international. I don't speak Czech. Um, many of our students actually, we offer Czech les lessons, but they're perhaps not fluent. But it really is um, becoming a business hub. So we're quite fortunate that in the guest lectures that we have, we can welcome people who are not only local, but also uh, global or who are working for global companies. So we're well situated for those um, connections. And we have three campuses across the city in addition to our digital campus. Accommodation is available if that's something that would be applicable to you. We can provide you with more um, information. And something that's applicable for everybody is that you would still have a welcome week and a program induction uh, to make sure that you're familiar with our platforms, where to find out about the latest events and so on. So all these opportunities are open regardless of if you're studying remotely or if you're studying uh, here in Prague on campus. So turning now to some of the practical things around, um, around deadlines and actually how to apply. So you can see here it says EU and local students, but that's also applicable to our global blended students who would not need a visa to study. I think most people here are interested in September. If you are still interested in February, you can see there's still time to apply. We have an upcoming deadline at the end of this week. Um, and even if you would like to start in September, we have an early registration deadline coming up. And the advantage of this deadline is uh, financially driven typically. So you can pay early and save on your first semester fees. And should you choose to apply for a scholarship bonus, um, there's also the opportunity to save. And something I would like to mention is if you are working for a company which you think might be interested in um, hearing about some of the advantages of being part of our industry network, there is actually a discount available um, if, you are an employee of one of our industry network partners. And you might also be interested to know that there's also the possibility um, if you can get your employer to sponsor your fees, that um, that's also possible too. So if that's something that you can uh, negotiate with them, then that might be an option in addition to um, obviously self-funding your studies. So you can see here the relevant deadlines. We have November coming up. Uh, for February, we would then be entering what's the, the later registration period. Um, and you can see for September, we then have a February and an April deadline uh, where you can still take advantages, uh, take advantage of the financial offers available. So what we typically recommend is after this call, if you're interested in applying, you can write to us in the chat if you would like us to send you the application or further details on our programs. We have individual module descriptors. Um, so we can send you the details of both programs to look at in detail the program content. Uh, if we've got time at the end, we can potentially even share those with you now to take away. Um, but if you would like to go ahead and apply, please just write to your admissions advisor or write to us in the chat and we can send that to you. So in terms of what we need from you, if you would like to go ahead with an application, the first thing is to let us know because we ask you to upload all your documents into an online application package that's personal to you. So we will send you a link where you complete all your personal details and then upload the documents that you can see here on the screen. So this is your confirmation of completed education. Um, so that would be your bachelor's degree and your transcripts, which should be all in English. If you did not study in English language, then we ask for a proof of your English level. Um, we accept IELTS or TOEFL. We also accept Duolingo, and you can ask us about the score or find it on our website. We ask you for a letter of motivation, which is explaining why you've chosen our university and also the program you are applying to specifically and the field that you're interested in and why. A copy of your ID, um, it's not relevant for anybody here, um, but there would be a portfolio for the School of Art and Design Master's programs, of course. Um, we do ask you for a CV, and then we also ask for recommendation letters, which we would ideally like to be on letterheaded paper and signed and stamped if possible. If all of your documents meet our requirements, um, which will include the, uh, your GPA or a final bachelor's degree outcome, then we would arrange a final interview between you and the program leader. And you heard about our access to lecturers and we talked a bit about the personal approach and hopefully you can see from the nature of today's event. Um, we think it's really important to get to know you as a potential applicant as well as um, 
you getting to know us. So we want to make sure that it's a good fit. So we always say to students to take that final interview as an opportunity to ask any questions as well, to confirm that Park City University is the university for you and that the programme is going to uh, meet your aims and requirements too. Assuming that final interview is successful, we would make you an offer to study. And only upon your acceptance of that offer to study would we invoice you for the first semester uh, tuition fees. And then our semesters are invoiced on a um, per semester basis. So the final thing really, um, before we do go to questions, I just wanted to touch again um, on how we will be teaching. So of course, if you're studying in the global blended learning format, your classes are taught through live interactive Zoom lectures, your participation um, is still mandatory and expected, uh, attendance is actually taken. There are the opportunities to come to Prague for residential blocks to meet your other uh, students and also meet your lecturers and for uh, networking opportunities. Most of our events that you heard about the speaker series, they are either held in hybrid format, so with in-person attendance and also online attendance, or some are held exclusively in person or held exclusively online. But to be honest, at the moment, most of the in running a hybrid uh, impact, uh, a hybrid uh, delivery, that's the word I was looking for. In terms of the next upcoming semesters, like I mentioned, uh, certainly for September 2022, we, if you're part of an in-person teaching uh, program, that's how we expect to deliver. We also expect that for February 2022, we are delivering in-person teaching for those students here in Prague. But as you heard from Alexa, uh, we're still working with some students to get them here. But anyone who's expected to be in person from February, um, we expect them to do to be here and to be running those in-person classes all being well. Um, and the Czech Republic does continue to welcome students from other EU countries as well as international students. And we do have um, COVID measures in place on campus, including wearing uh, respirators. We have um, air filters that we've invested in in our classrooms, of course, to help with ventilation, uh, testing and vaccination requirements as well, which we are um, requiring students to undertake effectively and keep us informed about to ensure everybody's safety as far as possible on campus. Uh, and we do have full policies available as well, should you be interested in, in reading them or for further information. So, um, of course, we do hope for in-person teaching, but we th felt that this was an important point to share. Um, but as hopefully you've heard from today, the full university experience is still available and at that master's level whether you're a professional or a recent graduate we believe that the experience that can be offered um, at Prague City University is an outstanding experience and that will prepare you uh, for your future career whether that be at the executive level starting out in your career or indeed sort of through to academia so if you do have any questions um alexa and i are here i know that alexa does actually have a class which she will have to go to very soon um but i will ask her if she has any closing remarks and uh, i'm happy to stay on to answer any questions and you can see our contact there should you wish to write to us or please feel free to write in the chat and i'll answer any questions now Alexa, if you would like to say anything, please feel free to. <laughs> uh, no, not, not really. Um, just also, if you know, if you're interested in a class visit, that's also possible. So, um, because these programs are offered um, through the global blended format, if you want to see how they're run or you know meet the program leader in that way, just let your admissions advisor know, and we can arrange that for you. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. a Excellent point. <laughs> so, so on that note, I, I will. Yeah, uh, I have to run to class. So uh, it was, thank you all for coming and um, we'll be in touch soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Um, OK, so I'm happy to stay um, for a couple of minutes. If you do want to go into uh, more detail on anything, ask any questions. Um, I think something came up regarding uh, the events. Uh, that we offer and how to find access to that. So I know that Alexis put in the um, Facebook link, but we also on our website, I just want to share with you our, um, our events calendar. And that's where you can find all the details to uh, register here. And you'll always find the most recent 
upcoming events which you can join. Um, typically things might be uh, live streamed or joined through a webinar. So Lewis, thanks very much. If you have no questions, um, please feel free to enjoy the rest of your evening.